Alrighty, so this is going to be a video on how I make my pie cuts. Um, this video is actually not taken in my shop. My shop has a, a motoring head saw on it. So I'm going to be doing this at a different shop that has a band saw similar to what you could buy at uh, Harbor Freight or, uh, you know, most places around that, you know, you would actually just move your, uh, you're a bandsaw vice around if that makes sense. So the first step in making pie cuts um, is you're going to want to take your tube. Uh, in this case, we are using a three inch uh, stainless tubing. Find a piece of box tubing or straight edge that is half of the diameter of your, uh, of your piece of tubing. So if we're using a piece of three inch tubing, uh, find a piece of box tube that is in, as uh, 1.5 inches. Um, the first thing that you're going to want to do after doing that is just take a magic marker, doesn't have to be anything special, put your piece of tubing up against here and just scribe a line. Right like that. So we now have a line in our tubing. Black line right there. Turn your tube 180 degrees or half a rotation here. Now, to get this completely perfect, take your tape measure, put it on your table, and measure an inch and a half to that line, which is the same diameter as what your box tube is, or it's half the diameter of your tube. So I have an inch and a half from the floor of this table to my line right now. Take my marker again, make a line. I now have a line there, turn it 180 degrees, and I have a line there. This is what's going uh, to be used to uh, make a, a perfect pie cut. This is where it all starts right here, is getting your lines <clears throat> uh, 180 degrees to each other, so there, Turn the tube over, measured an inch and a half from the table floor up to the line, drew a second line. So this will allow us to cut our pie cuts at the perfect center line radius. All right, so the second step to making a nice pie cut, you're gonna to wanna to find yourself a good trusty speed square. Uh, I prefer Swanson. I've just used this name brand for years. It can be a Harbor Freight, doesn't matter. Just a trusty old speed square. Um, so it all kind of starts with actually figuring out how to read the speed square. Uh, and you don't have to go very uh, in depth for what we're going to do here. But all speed squares should have that word pivot with an arrow pointing to that corner. That means that if you place this speed square right here, your angle degrees are, are going to be right in there. So you got 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, yada, yada, yada up to 90 right there. So the whole thing is 90 degrees, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this speed square, we're gonna lay it flat on here, up against the, the uh, back of our bandsaw uh, uh, stop right there. And the first thing that you have to figure out in making a pie cut is how many degrees do I want to make that pie cut? There's no real right or wrong answer. It's It all depends on, you know, how many pie cuts you want to use uh, in a 90 degree uh, bend or you know, a 360 degree circle. So how this works is like this. If I want six pie cuts to form 190, that means that each pie cut will have to be 15 degrees total. Uh, 90 divided by six is 15. Now, a pie cut has a miter on both sides. So 15 divided by two is seven and a half. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to make my pie cuts 7.5 degrees uh, on each side. So if you give me a second here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to place the speed square here. The pivot is right there. My back is still square. I'm going to pivot this until I reach 
0.5 degrees. So just take it from 90 right there. It's going to take it and swivel it out. Now this bandsaw is not very accommodating. I would need to, you know, extend this here out of tad filler to get an accurate reading. But for the sake of the video, so we're going to call it. So I'm going to start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to take my Sharpie. I'm just going to mark it, but it's not seven. It's seven and a half. Um, and again, there's no right or wrong degree to pie cuts. It's however big you want them to be. So I'm just going to make a mark at seven and a half for illustration purposes. Once, once that mark lines up with the edge of this piece here, I'm going to move my backstop and I'm going to clamp it down. That's just going to give me my accurate degree reading. So just for the sake of illustration here quick, spin this thing out to about right, about right there. You can see where the edge, uh, the edge right there is lining up, whoops, is lining up with my little black mark there, uh, seven and a half degrees roughly. Once that's done, take your backstop, pivot that sucker. Now, take your speed square, push it. Still lined up roughly. Pull out a tad more. Going to pivot the backstop just a little bit more. Gonna take our wrench, snug it. Snug it, tighten that down. There we have it, our backstop is set to 7.5 degrees. All right, so now that we have our backstop set to seven and a half degrees, we're gonna take our tube, which still has a 90 degree cut end on it for the sake of, you know, illustration. Um, we're gonna place it in here. And it does not matter how, you know, how big of a cut or how small of a cut at seven and a half degrees you make. The only thing that how far you push it through determines is going to determine your center line radius of your, of your, let's say, you know, 90 degrees. So it might be, you know, like a four inch center line radius, which is pretty large. Might be, you know, like an inch and a half, which is small. Uh, however big you want. Uh, I just suggest that you either make, you know, like use a line uh, as a stop, you could build yourself a small, you know, like a small stop if you want for, you know, like re repeated cuts. I'm just going to eyeball up here with this edge um, for, you know, for um, for the sake of, you know, this video. So I'm going to take my piece of tubing. I'm going to push it through. Now, find one of the lines that you mark, doesn't matter which one. Measure an inch and a half to that line. And clamp that piece of tubing. Double check ourselves. Yeah, we're at an inch and a half. Take your saw. Bring it on down. Make our first cut. Apologize about the bad cut. Cracked saw blade, ill maintained saw. But you get the point. Lock it down, put it back up. Now, we are going to take this piece of tubing. We're gonna rotate it 180 degrees to our second mark we made. I'm gonna measure, again, an inch and a half. Clamp it on down. Bring our saw down. There we have it, a rough pie cut. So our inch and a half line right there is one right in the center. It's in the widest part of that cut. 
Your second line is in the smallest part of that cut. You see that right there? Boom, you have one pie cut. Seven and a half degrees, seven and a half degrees should equal 15. Now this saw is not maintained and it's a piece of junk, quite frankly, but you get the idea. Uh, the concept applies across the board. So now if you wanna make more pie cuts, all you will keep on doing is you'll put your saw back up, loosen it up, rotate 180 degrees, measure an inch and a half again, cut. Rotate 180 degrees, cut. Now, I lined my cut up with that line there. You can, you know, you could, you know, clamp a little jig there if you want. You could clamp a stop. That way you can just push up against every time. So push it up against, cut. Turn, measure an inch and a half or half a diameter of, you know, whatever size tube that you're using. Up against that stop, cut. Turn, cut. Turn, cut. It's actually pretty simple. All right, so I am back in my shop, uh, and this is the final installment of how to make a good pie cut. So, you have your rough pie cut. First thing that you wanna do, since you're going to clean this thing up and smooth it off, you want to mark your center lines. So all I'm using for this is a Harbor Freight Spring Assist Center Punch. All I do, place in that line, push once, push twice, Push once, push twice, turn it over to that small mark, and just make one right in the center. All that does, that puts a wee little, just a weensy little dot there. Um, and I'll show you how this comes handy later. So, after those are marked, on to the next step. Take a flat disc, flap disc, whatever you want to do. Take off those burrs on the edge. Pretty simple. Switch to a wire wheel. And just go on the inside. D-bird, not clean, but D-bird. Smooth edges, you know, won't catch your fingers anywhere there. Won't catch your fingers anywhere there. Now, the last thing, take a piece of scotch brake pad. Uh, and this is scotch brake pad, it's like a red, looks almost like emery cloth, it's somewhat abrasive. So you're gonna, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take that, you could use, um, uh, you can use like a bench grip grinder with, you know, an abrasive pad on. And you're just gonna clean this. Just gonna run it around all nice and smooth and you know, just get it all clean, inside and out. I always just kind of fold it in half. Just run that sucker around, run it around. Clean it. And this is this can take some elbow grease. Um, and this is what makes pie cuts so expensive is you know the amount of work that goes into them. Now, granted, most of them aren't handmade; they're machine made, but the same the same concept you know still goes into them. Uh, the cleaning, the deburring, polishing, and like the final clean. Um, so now, once this is this might take you know 30, 45 seconds, whatever. Once that's clean, here's your pie cut. Clean on the inside. And your black marks are obviously gone from a magic marker, but 
Look at that, you have a center line mark there, and you have a center line mark there and there. Now, for example, this is one that I've been working on here, just for like the fun of it. Um, there my marks are there, they're lined up there. Uh, you know, some of the smaller marks you can see down in there, I'm all lined up somewhat. This is ju just a couple scrap pieces I had laying around, but nice, clean, the fit will be good, the finish will be good. Last but not least, you are going to take isopropyl alcohol. Um, I use 91%, you can use 70, I find 91 works better. Take that, put some on a rag, just go around that. Clean that puppy off because the key to getting a good weld is all in your preparation. You don't want any gr grease in there, you don't want any dirt in there, nothing. Use a, honestly, using like a fiberless rag would probably be your best bet. But there you are. We went from a straight section of tubing to a pie cut. Hope you enjoyed this video, man.